Hello, welcome to Stillborn Intuitive Tarot. This will be for April 23rd. Thank you very, very much for being here. To my subscribers, new and established, thank you very much. I simply adore all of you. Um, so I'm not going to prattle on too long. Uh, you're going to be seeing this on Tuesday. And probably before you're seeing it or after you've seen it, there is going to be the hearing with regards to uh, Trump and the gag orders. And, you know, all the times he's like stomped right over it. So that's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. Right now, I don't think he's going to toss him in the clink. But um, I do think that there's going to be some significant sort of reprimands um, and probably monetary fines. This is the thing, my understanding, and I could have it wrong, but my understanding is that one of the things that, that's going on in this evidentiary hearing, which is what this is, um, it, it's about sort of Trump needing to justify why he's saying what he's saying, why he's doing what he's doing, why he is specifically going out and breaking that gag order. So it's going to be an interesting day in court. But I want to look today at Juan Michon. I want to look at the judge. Um, there isn't a lot of information about him, or I'm not looking in the right place. Like, I can't even find an accurate birth date. It's like 62 or 63, um, 1962 or 63. Um, he has been... Um, I, I believe a judge for 17 years. He was a prosecutor before that. He really is considered that no-nonsense judge. He is um, a, incredibly fair, apparently. He doesn't tend to lean to one side or the other. So, you know, oh, and apparently somewhere in the past he gave a total of like $35 worth of contributions to the, the Democratic Party. I think 15 to... Biden and 10 somewhere else. And, you know, of course, in Trump's view, this makes him completely ineligible, you know, to, to what to see the case. He also presided over the um, the Weisselberg case and the Bannon case. So he is not um, a novice when it comes to Trump and the kind of shenanigans that surround him and the people around him that, that like to indulge in. So let's take a look at him and just see what we can find out about this judge who, as of right now, um, may be the only case that gets seen before uh, November. I don't happen to think that's true. I happen to think that they're going to be able to get that Chan 6 case in, but so right now, this is what we've got. So let's take a look at the judge and see what we can see, shall we? Here we go. Judge Juan Marchand, Judge Juan Marchand, Judge Juan Marchand. Okay, interesting, we're starting with the Four of Pentacles. And I actually really like this because, you know, it feels like this is somebody who was going to hold firm. Um, in some ways, he's very aware of the fact that he holds the power in the courtroom. And he's not going to allow anyone, not a former president, not a um, defense counsel, not anyone to try to, you know, suborn that. He he is the king of the castle in there, and he intends to continue on in exactly that way and fashion. And he is, um, you know, his energy is calm and focused. 
Like, honestly, as soon as I stepped into his energy, I felt like my breathing slowed down. Um, you know, he just, there's something very sort of methodical about the way he does things, about the way he thinks and processes stuff. And the reality is this, if Trump wasn't so hell-bent on, you know, finding fault with every little thing, he would probably actually realize that this guy is um, so not going to come after him, okay? And I don't mean he's he, Trump's going to come with anything, but what I mean is he's not some, you know, liberal, crazy, Biden-appointed guy who's just out to get Trump. But, of course, he's not going to see that because he's like, woo, in the head. But Marshawn is not. He's very clear and focused but it is his absolute intention that everything that needs to come out come out and see the light of day because despite all the um salacious details if you will about this case it boils down to accounting it boils down to you know putting notations into business records falsely that were not accurate for you know what the expenses were and you know Trump is out there day after day going on and on and, and telling his side of the story which is not accurate but bless his heart he's out there telling it and you know the prosecutor the prosecution the judges and frankly even the defense are silent right so it's just Trump out there and as far as Judge Marshawn is concerned, the facts of the case, the light, the truth, that needs to come out in his courtroom under the rules of law. That's his perception. That's where he's at. Six of Pentacles, again, he is incredibly fair and balanced. Over the course of this um, trial, which... I believe it's going to be wrapped by um, towards the end of May. I know they're saying it's going to go on and on, but I know that May is only, you know, in a handful of days away, really, if you think about it. Um, but it just feels like maybe the end of maybe the first week of, of June really does feel like that's where we're going to be at the tail end of this thing and, and wrapping things up. But my point was this, that He's going to make decisions over the course of however many weeks. And depending on the decision, both sides are going to have something to say about it, one way or the other. Um, you know, the prosecution is not always going to be thrilled with the decisions, and nor is the defense always going to be thrilled with the decisions. And I guess in some way, it, it, that tells you something, right? It, he is being um, neutral, and he is being balanced. But listen at this, as you know, or many of you would know this is my trump card, one of my trump cards, the greedy king, king of pentacles. He is, the judge is not going to tolerate. Um, it, it's interesting because he sort of views it almost like his insubordination, right? Um, he's just not going to tolerate the kind of behavior that Trump wants to get away with. Uh, you know, he has already told him to sit down. You know, the court um, has not adjourned. He's already, you know, told his lawyers to tell him to be quiet and stop trying to intimidate jurors. He's very uh, mindful of what goes on, and he is not going to put up with a whole heck of a lot from him. He will communicate very, very firmly. He's more than aware of the fact that. Trump's lawyers are simply trying to create or find um, reasons that they can justify an appeal. And he's not going to fall into that trap. Okay. I, he's just not. Um, and so he's, he's, he's not cautious to the point of, um, not, not moving, but he is going to be careful, but he will be incredibly firm in terms of how, you know, Trump behaves in that court and what he kind of gets away with. Um, do not be surprised if at some point Trump, Trump gets removed to a room 
to the side and he can watch this sort of on closed circuit television. If that happens, it's not going to be a permanent thing. All right. It will kind of be a, um, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's Thursday and it's lunchtime. And guess what? You're going in the box for the rest of the afternoon. Let's see if you can settle down. We will revisit this on Friday. So it's not like he tosses them in there and says you can't come back. It feels like they're sort of short, kind of incremental um, punishment. Because again, he's being very, very mindful of appeal. He's being very mindful of perception. And, but he's not ruled by it. Okay. I, like, I don't want you to get that, that feeling. He, he is aware of all the balls, if you will, that are in the air. But for him, it first and always is about fairness and balance. And that's what you're going to see. Um, make no mistake. He is the king of that castle in there. Um, he runs that that room, that courthouse, that court room. Uh, exactly as he wants it run and he doesn't tend to tolerate or put up with shenanigans of any way shape or form um, the magician he has Who has an astuteness when either side, but predominantly, you know, the defense, tries to create trickery or mislead. He will call him on that behavior. Um, he is not going to have his courtroom. His reputation, his his staff's reputation, tarnished by, you know, Trump's behavior. He is very, very mindful of the fact that there are a lot of people who are in jeopardy. I'm not going to flat out say they're in danger and they're going to I'm just saying, you know, he's aware of the fact that there are people within the courthouse, et cetera, within his staff, his family, um, prosecutions, et cetera, that, you know, and of course the jurors, that, that he needs to be mindful of keeping them safe and ensuring that things go the way they are supposed to, based on what the law says and how the law functions and works. Now, um, I believe I, um, you've been told this before, I think I channeled this at some point. Um, Trump is not going to be found guilty um, on all the charges. But he is on a significant number of them. Um, it's not five or six. It feels more like, you know, 20, 25, 15 to 25, somewhere in there, feels closer to kind of the, the, the charges that he's going to get um, leveled against him, if you will. Um these are the last two cards I pulled. Okay. So you have the death card and you have judgment. So what this is talking about is the judgment that comes down is going to put an end to a cycle that is connected to Trump and his behavior. This very very, very much feels like this is going to be um, the first time he, in fact, will be held criminally liable. And 
you know, they're going to rush to appeal. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. But I honestly don't see it serving him. I don't actually think, it, it, you know, if, if it works its way up the appeal process, I don't see any of it going in his favor. You know, Marshawn is being careful to start with. And the jury's opinions, their judgments, are the ones that ultimately are respected. So it doesn't feel like any appeals are it, they're going to get him anywhere, honestly. It just feels like it's going to be another delaying tactic, another you know misdirection kind of situation that Trump is going to engage in because that's what he does. But this case for some reason feels as if it's going to um sorry it's just saw me smile so do you remember um those big balloons um of trump in a diaper as a baby that floated. I remember there were some in the UK at some point, but they're really big ones. Well, so they just showed me that and a great big giant pin puncturing it. <laughs> so it deflated. Um, that's what this case is going to do to Trump. It's really going to take the wind out of his sails. He is so buffered by everyone telling him that this is unfair. There's no real case here. Um, this is nonsense. He didn't do anything wrong. That when he actually finds out that, that, that he's been found guilty, it's going to just send him because the people around him at this point literally do him no favors by feeding a narrative that only he wants to hear. And the fact that it's not true, not relevant at all. So, you know, what they're doing is they're there, the, the lawyers, the, the staff around him, that's, that's who they are. What they are doing is they're keeping him occupied. They're keeping him distracted. They're, they're pump, pumping in, um, if, you know, information that, that, you know, inflates his ego. That's part of the reason that he can go out two and three times a day on that, you know, it's courthouse steps or wherever that press conferences take place and really believe that this is a witch hunt and this is wrong and he shouldn't be in court. There shouldn't be a case. It's because that's what he's getting fed. And when that doesn't end up becoming his reality, he is going to have a very, very hard time not only processing, forget understanding, he's not even going to be able to process it because he is completely ill-prepared for that kind of a result. It's exactly like the election. Right. He was being told and that case, they, they were at least telling him that, listen, you're not going to win this. But he only absorbed information that confirmed what he wanted to believe. And what he wanted to believe was that he was winning this thing. He was winning it by a landslide. And if he didn't, it was because people cheated. And over time, that simply became his truth. And. What you have now is somebody who is convincing himself there's no reason for this court case. It's bogus. It's a witch hunt. He didn't do anything wrong. Nobody in his company did anything wrong. And, you know, he's just being picked on. And so when the truth comes tumbling down, he's going to have a problem. As far as the judge goes, he is as steady <laughs> and as rock solid as you can imagine. His energy is like you know, it's kind of like a really, really big ship on the ocean, you know? 
They just move forward at a steady pace and the waves part and the waves part and the ship just keeps going and going and going. That's kind of his energy. It's just solid. Um, you know, he doesn't, even when he is frustrated, even when he is aggravated, it's not that he doesn't show it, but what he shows is such a small portion of what he's feeling. And so this this case is going to be a real trial for him. Um, when it's said and done, he's going to be really glad it's said and done. In fact, I would not be surprised if soon after that, he just decided he needed to take a really good vacation. Um, but, it, you know, he is going to hold... Um, everyone's feet to the iron. It's not just going to be Trump and it's not just going to be the defense. It's going to be the prosecution too. They step out of line, they're going to get slapped back. Defense steps out of line, they're going to get slapped back. Donald Trump acts like an idiot, he's going to get removed. That's just the way it's going to be, folks. So in many, many ways, he is a really great choice for this case and for this trial even though it's sort of considered the a more minor one it is significant in that it is the first and it is significant because it's because trump has to be there every single day um it's going to give people broadly a a real clear indicator of how Trump himself is doing, even when he goes and does these rambling monologues, um, you know, as he leaves the court, um, you're going to continue to see that kind of deterioration. And that's where we're at. So does Trump win? No. Um, is every single charge found to be guilty? No. Are the vast majority of them? Yes. Is there going to be a monetary fine? Yes. Is there going to be a jail sentence? I'm getting a yes, but he won't end up going to jail because he's going to be allowed to stay out of jail during the appeals process. That's what I'm getting for right now. Thank you for being here. Um, don't forget to put your questions for Pendulum Friday in the comment section below. And um, you take really good care of yourself. And I'll see you later on in the week. Bye-bye for now.